Bonsoir, mesdemoiselles, mesdames, messieurs. Soyez les bienvenus. Bienvenidos. Bienvenue. And welcome to the 1997 Foreign Language Honor Society's induction ceremony. We celebrate this evening to honor these students, foreign language, who have demonstrated a high degree of achievement, responsibility, and interest in another language and culture, and for their pride, their performance, and their passion. First, I would like to introduce the Foreign Language Department staff members. Senor Benaghi, teacher, <laughs> teacher of Spanish in 15 years in the department. Madame Cartier, teacher of French and advisor to the French Honor Society and 14 <coughs> years in the department. And this is her last induction ceremony at Timberland Regional High School, where she will be retiring in June. A very <laughs> early retirement. <laughs> and uh, not able to be with us this evening is Senora Allen, teacher of Spanish and co-advisor of the Spanish Honor Society and seven years in the department. And the other co-advisor of the Spanish Honor Society, Senor Chamberlain, four years in the department. <laughs> Herr Madsen, teacher of German. <laughs> advisor to the German Honor Society and three years in the department. Senora Farley. <laughs> teacher of Spanish at the high school level three classes, and the elementary level of distance learning network, and almost one year in the department. <laughs> and Juan Patricia Hodgkin's department head, and 23 years in the department. <laughs> Voila, the Department of Pride, Performance, and Passion. I would also like to introduce to you this evening Principal William Neely, and how many years in the department? <laughs> <laughs> we will also welcome you. I kind of just got all of my Spanish in one shot. <laughs> it's wonderful to see everybody. Uh, if you like, do you want to grab a seat? Probably be a little more comfortable, not that they're the most comfortable seats in the world. But there's some up front here. I'm not trying to embarrass you. <laughs> <laughs> I usually save that for, for my friends like uh, the Caprioli's or the La Chances or people like that, you know. He's already ducking. It's good to see everybody. It's even, even better that we're here tonight to celebrate and to celebrate what these young people have been able to do in certainly two or three short years of study in a foreign language. As you know, we start in the ninth grade and to be able to get to this night is a lot of hard work. Important though for you to hear a message from me, and that message is that you're being challenged consciously. You just heard Mademoiselle Hodgkins talk about the department and how wonderful they are. And I think you can speak for the fact that they do challenge you, they do push you, they do have high expectations for you, as do your parents and your guardians. That's why they're here tonight. That's why you're here tonight. The challenge that you have is not to just accept this award tonight, to, to accept this membership tonight and to say, okay, check it off on a list. The challenge I pose to you is that you continue your learning in foreign language, that you continue your studying in foreign language, and hopefully after, after Timberlane, with whatever you're going to do, that you make some use of it. It will come in handy in the world out there. You're not going to compete with Timberlane students. You're not going to compete with students from New Hampshire, nor are you going to compete with students from the United States. You're going to enter a world market. You're going to be entering a turn of the century that's going to be very different for you and for all of us in this room. The jobs that we know about today are not going to be there in a couple of years. So we are always challenging ourselves as to how best to challenge you for the unknown in reality. And by pushing you, and by your parents and guardians saying to you, you need to do it, you need to study, you need to take the time, as much as that probably aggravates and annoys you, it 
it's done with love, it's done with caring, and it's done for a purpose. So please accept that challenge from me, accept that challenge from your folks. There is a reason for it. I know we, you probably don't think we have any idea what we're doing. And when you're 21, 23, 25, the light bulb will go back on and you'll say, wow, they did have a clue. We know that. We'll live through that, but that's okay. I'd also like to thank you because it doesn't happen by accident. It's nice to be out on a night like tonight. It's a beautiful night. It's a beautiful night, not only weather-wise, but more importantly, because we get to celebrate accomplishments. We get to celebrate what our young people have done. But the bottom line happens to be that they're, they're here for a reason. And you're that reason. Your support has made a difference. You've gone out of your way to be here. You've gone out of, out of your way to, to rush through probably a family meal, to make sure that you were here on time, to bring the cameras, and in some cases to forget the camera, but to make sure that somebody will take the picture for you because you care and you love what's going on. And as the principal of the high school, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank you for that kind of support. It showed just a, a week or so ago at the ballot box. By the budget being passed, by the technology articles being passed, by your love and caring of the education that our young people need to have in this district. You're paying with your pocketbooks. We're all paying with our pocketbooks. But the bottom line is that's our future. And if we don't accept that, we don't do something about that, we're the ones that are remiss. So I appreciate that fact. And I want to thank you publicly for that. And finally, Mademoiselle stole some of my thunder. Um, it's not a surprise, but Mrs. Carter will be missed. Mrs. Carter has been an integral part of this celebration for a lot of years, and more importantly, an integral part of this high school for 14 years. She's come in with a smile on her face. She's been enthusiastic. She's been exciting in the classroom. We have some of the French teachers, and I see some smiles starting to break out of the antics that they get to see on a daily basis. All with a purpose, all with a result. And some of those results are in front of you. So on behalf of the administration and the faculty and the students, I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank you. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. It's good to see you. This will be the first of many events in the springtime. And uh, from past years and past history, I know I'll be seeing some of the same faces later on in May when we do the Honors Banquet. And uh, certainly for some of you, we've seen you at graduations past. And for some, it's your first one coming through. And we appreciate the fact that it's a start of a good relationship. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the, tonight's musical selection, which is going to be performed by a quartet. Um, we're going to hear a piece entitled The Entrance of the Queen of Sheba, which is by Geo Friedrich Hendel. Um, I'm going to introduce the uh, musicians to you. On violin, we have uh, Bethany Cobb. Yeah. Uh, Julia Berucci. Uh, uh, this evening, we have uh, Kate Haspio. And on cello, um, Tara Master.
Bonsoir. C'est encore mon plaisir de vous dire bienvenue ce soir aux parents, aux autres professeurs, mes amis, à M. Neely, le proviseur, et bien sûr aux étudiants qui seront les nouveaux membres de notre société en arrêt de français et aux autres membres des autres sociétés en arrêt du lycée Timberlane. Uh, the, tonight is a landmark ceremony. It is our 10th anniversary of the Victor Hugo chapter of the National French Honor Society. For those of you who are curious, and those of you who are not, I also get to tell my story for the last time as to why the Victor Hugo name was chosen for our chapter here. It was chosen by the charter members of the 1987 group who had uh, planned and finally carried out a trip to Boston to see the first Boston presentation of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. The problem was it was during the February snowstorm that canceled school and canceled the bus and canceled just about everything else in the area. But with the $50 tickets in hand, the students, one way or another, they all got to Boston and saw the production and I certainly agree it was well worth the effort. And thus the name of the Victor Hugo chapter, and this year we have another trip planned on May 20th, we're all looking forward to it, and this actually will be our fourth trip into Cile Mis. Um, it, is, it is my hope that the French Honor Society certificates that will be given out tonight will find a special place in these high school students' memories such as Mr. Mealy was talking about. The certificates symbol a love of the French language and Francophile culture, and a desire to continue the study of French for years after high school graduation, and even to just use their French. Uh, we certainly have had our number of graduates who have either majored or minored in French. Right now we have a young woman who's spending her junior year abroad for a year in Paris, and her apartment is right near the metro station that was in the news uh, a couple of months ago. I won't tell you why if you don't remember. Uh, we also have one of our 1997 graduates this year, Jen Tufts, who will also be inducted as a member of the Spanish Honor Society, who is planning to major in French. The uh, national uh, the National French Honor Society has some pretty strict membership requirements. They were established in 1949 and are based on scholarship, character, and an extra spark of interest and ability and love of French. The induction ceremony is always carried out by the chapter's officers. This evening, Vice President Julie Joël Papucci will tell of the goals of the society. Secretary, excuse me, Treasurer Jennifer Germain Madigan will tell of how the ceremony actually takes place en français, and Treasurer Allison Amelie Hyatt will translate what Germain told you, and then she will also explain our motto. And finally, President Charlie Charles Wicks will actually induct the members and to recite the promise with them. We also have this evening two um, present members of the Honor Society whose names are not on the program, but they will be officially inducted this evening because last year they were not able to be here because they were attending the uh, New Hampshire All-State Chorus Festival. So those two people whose names are not in the program are Bethany, Beatrice Cobb, and Sean Jean McGrath. Alors, maintenant, la cérémonie va commencer et levez-vous, mes étudiants. La Société Honoraire de Français a été fondée par l'Association Américaine des Professeurs de Français en 1989. Le but de cette organisation est de stimuler l'intérêt dans l'étude de français. 
d'avancer et de récompenser un degré élevé d'érudition, de créer de l'enthousiasme pour la connaissance de la culture et de la civilisation française, et d'encourager et de perpétuer la solidarité franco-américaine. The National French Honor Society was founded by the American Association of Teachers of French in 1949. The purpose of this organization is to stimulate interest in the study of French, to promote higher standards of scholarship, to reward high scholastic attainments, to create enthusiasm for an understanding of French culture and civilization, and to promote and perpetuate Franco-American solidarity. La course du flambeau est une ceremonie qui avait lieu à Athènes dans la Grèce antique. Pour cette solennité, des citoyens se passaient pour mettre un sort de chaîne. Le premier a illuminé un flambeau à l'hôtel, courait le transmettre à un second, qui le transmettait à un troisième, et ainsi, de main et main, chaque citoyen courait sans un regard en arrière, préservant la flamme qu'il allait remettre à un autre. Platon a reconnu dans cette course de flambeau l'image des générations de la vie. The transmission or handing on of the torch is a ceremony which used to take place in ancient Greece. For this solemn occasion, the citizens lined up in, at equal distances from each other, forming a sort of chain. The first one in line lighted the torch and at the altar, ran to transmit it to a second, who transmitted it to a third. Thus, from hand to hand, each citizen transmitted, ran, back, ran without a backward glance, keeping alive the flame which he was to hand on to another. Plato recognized in this running with a torch the image of the succeeding generations of life. Transmettant entre nous le flambeau de notre enthousiasme et notre devise, vous voyez ses pouvoirs. Those who will be leaving you in a few months, transmit to each other the torch of our enthusiasm and our motto, vous voyez ses pouvoirs, where there's a will, there's a way. <coughs> En président de ce chapitre, j'ai l'honneur ce soir de vous présenter les, les étudiants qui veulent être membres de la Société Arrière Française du lycée de Montréal. Pour continuer la cérémonie, je vous présente les étudiants. Thank you. 
Concitoyen de mon pays. Concitoyen de mon pays. Je promets d'encourager. Je promets d'encourager. La connaissance de la solidarité. La connaissance de la solidarité. En journée. En journée. Les autres pays du monde. Et les autres pays du monde. Voici ma promesse. Voici ma promesse. Bien fait. La promesse est prise. Soufflez le bouti. Et passez à la sauce. Guten Abend, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren. Ich möchte zuerst heute Abend euch alle von Ihnen sehr herzlich begrüßen. Und zuerst möchte ich unsere Offiziere unseres Kapitels vorstellen. Zuerst unser Präsident Kai Derber. Unser Vizepräsident Karl Wix. Unsere erste Sekretärin Heidi Gedos. Zweite Sekretärin Laura Bauer. 
Jetzt möchte ich, meine Damen und Herren, unsere Kandidaten für heute Abend vorstellen. Zuerst äh, Erika Carlsen. Bitte schön aufstehen. Äh, Alan Debes. Tanja Gage. Heidi Schnauzki. Tina Kasches. Patrick Murphy, Donald Robinson und Gordon Wolf. So we're very uh, happy to make you uh, members of the ETA New Hampshire chapter of the National German Honor Society. Uh, Delta Epsilon Phi. There are over 900 chapters uh, throughout the United States and Canada and are active uh, extensions of this fraternity. Um, let your, uh, I would like you to remember that this evening as you accept the honor and responsibility of this membership that uh, to this society that you remember that it represents your continued interest in increasing your understanding of your own culture by learning and appreciating that of another. Your membership will make certain uh, demands of you. Thus, in the presence of these witnesses, also the Offiziere and Swiss Kapitels, officers of our chapter, um, they will uh, conduct the following uh, oath for you. I möchte also zuerst unser Vizepräsident Karl Wicks bitte ja von nach vorne kommen. Sie haben sich als Schüler der deutschen Sprache besonders ausgezeichnet und ihr Interesse an der deutschen Sprache und Kultur gewesen. Wir freuen uns daher, Sie als Mitglieder der Ehrenverbindung Dalbitze Epsilon Phi in unser Kapitel Nunetra Eda aufzunehmen. Die Zugehörigkeit in dieser Ehrenverbindung bestätigt ihre Kenntnisse in Deutschen. Sie verlangt aber gewisse Vertrauen. Vor diesen Zeugen frage ich Sie daher. Aufstehen, bitte. Wollen Sie zusammen mit uns die Ideale unserer Verbindung Delta Epsilon Phi aufverkaufen? Sind Sie dazu bereit, dann sagen Sie, wir wollen. Also und jetzt heißen wir Sie herzlich willkommen in dieses des das ETA Kapitel der Ehrenverbindung der Epsilon Phi.
<laughs> we now declare you candidates, uh, not, no longer candidates, but members of the Delta Epsilon Phi German Honor Society. And please come forward when your name is called to receive your membership certificates. Erica Carlson. Ryan Jesenowski. <laughs> Tina Cassius. on your program, but she has a very important music event this evening, and she will be inducted at next year's ceremony. <laughs> Brian Michael. Buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos a nuestra ceremonia de iniciación. Esta noche tenemos 35 estudiantes que se van a ser miembros de nuestro capítulo García Lazo de la Vega de la Sociedad Honoraria Hispánica. Cada estudiante ha demostrado un profundo interés y ha tenido éxito en estudiar esta bella lengua castellana. Good evening and welcome to the Spanish portion of the induction ceremonies. Tonight, 35 students are going to be initiated into our chapter, Garcia Lasso de la Vega. Yes, the last four rows are all ours. Um, of the National Spanish Honor Society. Each student has, has demonstrated a profound interest in and has excelled at the study of, of Spanish. I ask that you bear with us, whereas our entire ceremony will be conducted in Espanol. Um, I think Senor Binagi was going to sing the soprano at this point. He wanted to take an active role in this whole ceremony, so... Uh, firstly, I would like to draw your attention to the two flags in the center. That, uh, the one above being the flag of Spain, and the one below, that of Colombia. Um, tonight we are inducting one student, Álvaro Cuesta Sánchez, an exchange student from Spain. We are also inducting a 
We are also inducting a, a few that I know of, Colombian students. Could you please stand? Y ahora les presento a Samantha Goodman, la presidenta de nuestro capítulo. Miembros antiguos y nuevos de esta sociedad hispánica, salud. Estamos reunidos aquí para la iniciación de este grupo de estudiantes que han mostrado y probado un vivo interés en la bella lengua castellana. Escuchemos todos a nuestra secretaria, quien nos dará un resumen corto de la historia y de los fines de nuestra sociedad. Esta sociedad honoraria hispánica fue fundada por la Asociación Americana de Maestros de Español en Portugués. En 1953, para los estudiantes de la Escuela Secundaria Norteamericana y este capítulo se debe a los acuerdos del señor Bernardi de Tumla y Mijan High School, al que lo estableció en diciembre de 1983. El nombre de esta capítulo es Garcilasa de la Vega. Nuestro lema es todo la una. Nuestros colores son el rojo y el oro. Nuestra insignia y nuestro sello son los de la Madre Asociación. Esta es nuestra iniciación seria y significativa. Sutan todos han fiado. Esta es nuestra Madre Vela. Nos sirve cada año. Representa la inspiración. Como ejemplo de esta inspiración, vamos a escuchar las palabras del poeta Núñez de Arce, que escribió el poema Excelsior. ¿Por qué los corazones venerables? ¿Por qué las almas fieles? En los fieros combates de la vida, ni lucha ni resistencia. El espíritu humano es más constante cuanto más se levante. Dios puso al fondo en la llanura y puso la roca en la montaña. La blanca niega que en los hondos valles de derretirse fijara en las altivas con cubres perdese inmutable y eterna. Cada uno va a tener una belleza en la mano. Esta simboliza nuestra carrera en la vida. Así, sin arder, existe, pero no vive. Esta belleza está diciendo, si me queman vivo, si no, cristo. Ojalá que nuestras vidas nunca sean sin arder. Ahora, vendrá cada uno de ustedes en torno a esa madre vela para recibir de ella la llama simbólica. La llama que simboliza con su calor la inspiración hacia otros ideales. Cada uno pasaba adelante al oro su nombre. Joshua Belova. Nicole Dodier. 
Eric Doucette. And Daryl Forsyth will not be inducted this evening. Stephen Fredrickson. Dennis Jean Gregorio. Leah Gilchrist. Barbara Gray. Ricky Hartwell. Mark Hoffman. Shannon Hussey. Janessa Kimball. <laughs> Stacy Korsak. <laughs> Kristen Lawrence. Karen Mahal. <laughs> Tara Master. <laughs> Jennifer McNally. Lady Mejia. Ana Maria Morales. Catherine Che. <laughs> David Samard. <laughs> Sarah Smith. <laughs> Nathan Sterrell. Christine Stork. Andrew Swanberry. Jennifer Tufts. Jessica Vincent. <laughs> Brian Weber.
ustedes repitirán juntos el juramento de la sociedad frase por frase. Como miembro, Como miembro. del capítulo, del capítulo. Gasilazo de la Vega, Prometo dedicarme, Prometo dedicarme. Al, estudio. al estudio de la lengua española, de la lengua española. Con, el fin. con el fin de dominarla algún día. De algún día. Recordando, Recordando que una lengua, que una lengua puede, ser puede ser un lazo fuerte, un lazo fuerte entre, personas, entre personas de distintos orígenes, de, de raza o religión, de raza o religión como, ciudadano, como ciudadano de mi patria. Prometo promover, Prometo promover la, amistad la amistad y el entendimiento, y el entendimiento entre, ella, entre ella y los otros países, los otros países del, mundo. del mundo. Esta es mi promesa, Esta es mi promesa y mi juramento. Ahora cada una apagará la llama de su bendita todos. Pero nunca la de su espíritu. Recordemos esto. Guarde cada miembro su bebida como recuerdo de su iniciación en sociedad. Amigos, por la autoridad que me concede la presidencia del capítulo Garcilasa de la Vega, yo los declaro miembros de este capítulo. Pasan ustedes enseguida para recibir un torno su certificado y para firmar el registro y recibir la bienvenida de vida. <coughs> Joshua Bellabal.
Dennis G. Gregorio.
Pegue o smart. Sarah Smith. Nathan Sparrow. Christine Stork. Jessica Vincent. Aplausos para ellos. It is now with great pleasure that I present to you tonight's guest speaker. He's an exchange student from Madrid, Spain, who has been with us since the beginning of the school year. As you'll see, his English is outstanding. He has been an exceptional student, receiving the praise of all his teachers. He has also recently expressed interest in beginning an English Honor Society at his high school, Madrid. So that'd be a nice kind of little exchange program that we have going on there. Pero ahora tengo el honor de presentarles a Álvaro Cuesta Sánchez. la juventud por saber y conocer otro lenguaje y cultura diferentes. Para aquellos de ustedes que me estén entendiendo, que estoy seguro que eran pocos entre el público, uh, quiero decir que para mí es un honor y un privilegio el poder formar parte de este grupo cultural. En este breve discurso voy a hablar acerca de la importancia del estudio de un segundo idioma y de las consecuencias en el futuro. First of all, I'd like to thank to all the Spanish teachers in the high school who supported me this year and especially for making me feel like I belong to this whole society, which is based on my first language, Spanish, and my culture. And my culture. I'd like to tell all of you tonight my opinion about what studying a second language means, uh, based on my personal experience. The study of a second language is not just to learn how to speak, uh, but also to know and understand its culture, people, lifestyle, customs, and try to make the best of it and respect the worst. Because only the ignorance regarding another culture is what makes people prejudiced, and we can't let this, let, <coughs> let this happen. Excuse me. We have to expose people to diversity to make them uh, understand it. You all know better than I that the world is changing very fast. That is getting more and more alike, 
The frontiers are disappearing and society is getting more competitive. For this reason, I think that there is a necessity of a second of, of standing a second language to be able to travel around the world or to work in an international company. Uh, it's in a world which is getting really small. It's, uh, uh, as Senor Chamberlain said, I'm going to try to create an English home society that will help both societies, uh, American and Spanish, to make themselves better and to learn from one each other, from one another, by keeping both in permanent communication, <coughs> like letters and <coughs> Thanks. Uh, finally, I would like to thank, to take this opportunity to suggest and recommend to all parents to let their kids travel to another country for a whole school year. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but uh, trust me. Uh, I think it's the best way to learn a second language, even if to belong, belong it to a hard society is also good. But I think the best is going to another culture, another country. And uh, it's culture, and most importantly, to make oneself a better and more mature person. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Álvaro, y bravísimo. Uh, tonight's musical selection that's on your program is not going to be performed because the quartet had to leave. So I, when I found that out this afternoon at quarter of two, I asked one of the students in my last period class if he would perform for us for a couple of reasons. First of all, he's been promising to make a cassette for me all year, and he hadn't done it yet, so I kind of like to feel it high. And secondly, um, I've heard he's fantastic, and he is, but the other reason is uh, his name that he chose for French class kind of goes along with um, the Victor Hugo chapter of the National French Honor Society here at Timberlake. He chose the name Marc-Claude Jean Valjean. <laughs> Although, I really think he chose it so he'd have enough time to think of the answer when I call on him. <laughs> At any rate, his name is Mark Pikowitz, and he is going to play the military polonaise by Frédéric Chopin. Alors, Marc-Claude Jean Valjean. <laughs> Thank you. 
with Jean Valjean. <laughs> <laughs> and to you, congratulations. Félicitations. Félicitations. Gratulations. And a special salute this evening to the following members of the Honor Societies who hold more than one membership in uh, the Honor Societies. Nicole Gio Gregorio. <laughs> French and Spanish, and she went on a trip to Spain last year, and she's going to France with me next week. Kimberly Nelson, French and Spanish. Lady Mejia, French and Spanish. <laughs> Jennifer Tufts, French and Spanish. <laughs> so, it is not uncommon to hear an occasional C instead of a we, <laughs> or E instead of an A, or a porqué instead of a pourquoi or pasque in our classroom. <clears throat> Teaching language is enjoyable fun and it's exciting, especially when it's learned with enthusiasm, exemplary effort, exemplary effort, and a smile as in the case of these students before you. It's also not uncommon to hear in a typical foreign language classroom, why do they do it that way? <laughs> the answer is simple for me anyway. I just say, say le français. <laughs> Which is an easier explanation than if I were an English teacher and I had to explain why there's no egg in eggplant, no ham in hamburger, neither pine nor apple in pineapple, and sweet meats are candy, and sweet bread, which is not sweet, is meat. Quicksand works slowly, boxing rings are square, etc., etc. See how easy? the foreign languages, <laughs> and if the plural of tooth is teeth, why isn't the plural of booth? <laughs> why not one moose, two <laughs> And if coming from Wisconsin makes a Wisconsinite, what does coming from Paris make? <laughs> <laughs> Your nose runs and your feet smell. <laughs> <laughs> and how can a slim chance and a fat chance mean the same thing, while a wise man and a wise guy are opposites? How can the weather be as hot as bleep bleep and as cold as bleep bleep at the same time? <laughs> Languages are the creation of humans who continue to modify them. Languages reflect psychology and our creativity. That is why when the stars go out, they are visible. When the stars are out, they're visible. And when the lights are out, they're invisible. And when I wind up my watch, I start it. And when I wind up this speech, I end it. <laughs> so congratulations to all of you. You worked hard, long and hard, to reach this goal, and you've made many sacrifices along the way. And may you disseminate your enthusiasm and your love for foreign language to others out there in this world and narrow the gap of misunderstandings in the world. I urge you to continue your study of another language and culture, and I challenge you to conquer it with pride, performance, and passion. And congratulations, parents, for motivating your sons and daughters and for providing them the home environment conducive to achieving this goal mm -hmm. and this kind of success with pride, performance, and passion. And congratulations, teachers, for your motivational techniques, your dedication, your crazy users, <laughs> your enthusiasm, and a genuine love for the job that you do every day with pride, performance, and passion. Thank you to the music department, those who remain, the string quartet for a beautiful arrangement and to Mark Pickowitz, our pianist, a merveilleux splendid. And before we uh, extinguish our candles, um, President Charles Wicks of the French Club would like to make a brief presentation.
not to try to drag this out too much longer, but um, we've been lucky in the French department to have two very talented teachers. And unfortunately for us, however, we'll be, lo be losing one at the end of this year. Madame Kreger, a teacher here for 14 years, has been one of the favorite teachers of many students and faculty alike. She's been dedicated to teaching us with her great wealth of energy and um, knowledge as best she can. And she has always been involved in our lives. So I'm sure most French students remember coming back from school after a weekend on Monday and at her asking, how's our weekend? What do we do? How are our lives? And so on. Um, I'd like to turn over to Jen. Um, as Mademoiselle stated earlier, um, one can find a lot of enthusiasm in a foreign language class, and that is certainly evident in Mademoiselle's classes. If there was anyone to talk into the class, she would always be standing up and talking to us sometimes jumping around and <laughs> yelling and just getting us to be involved in French. Um, there will never be another madame. And for everyone here, merci beaucoup. here, the students being inducted, and all the students, and of course, like Marc Claude Jean Valjean, who stepped in so readily tonight when I asked him, uh, these students deserve all your coupons, Monsieur Benagui. Mm -hmm. Monsieur Benagui has started a program that rewards students um, by teachers being uh, urged to give them coupons for civility, and this group is probably the most civil group, uh, the French students, the, the Spanish students, the German, they're, they're wonderful. Merci, merci beaucoup, and parents, too. They couldn't have done it without you, and moi non plus. Merci mille fois, au revoir. Maintenant, au revoir, jamais adieu, as the little prince would say. Au revoir. <laughs> Yeah. 